Good morning, everybody. Um, as I think some of you who were here a little bit earlier will have gathered, I'm terribly excited about this because it's my first live Zoom service. The problem with that will be that whatever happens, happens. And I would just ask you to bear with us, please. Um, Andy is controlling the meeting and he is going to try and make sure that everybody stays muted for the duration. Um, we've hopefully all got a cuppa and maybe even some breakfast, a bit like we do when it's Cafe Church Sunday. And you might like a pen and paper. Our call to worship this morning. We come from a world confused about truth. We come with our own uncertainties. Let us bring the darkness of human understanding into the presence of God, who is light. Let us bring the story of our search for truth and share in fellowship the things we have heard and seen and touched. I am delighted this morning that Poppy is going to share the Bible reading with us this morning, and it's the story of Thomas from John chapter 20. When Jesus appeared to the disciples, one of the eleven was missing. This was a man named Thomas. After Jesus was gone, Thomas came back to the room where everyone was hiding. When he entered, the disciples told him, Thomas, oh Thomas, it is true, we've seen Jesus, he is alive. He said to them, no, I won't believe it unless I see the nail marks in his hands. I have to put my finger where the nails were. If I can put my hand into his side, then I'll believe you. Eight days later, Jesus visited the disciples again. This time Thomas was with them. Jesus walked right through the locked doors. He stood in the room. Peace be with you, he said. Then he said, Thomas, come here with your finger and see my hands. With your fing touch the wounds in my hand. Put your hand into my side. Stop doubting now and believe. Thomas felt very ashamed for not believing. He hung his head. My Lord and my God. Jesus answered him. Is it because you have seen me that you now believe? There will be many who do not see and are still willing to believe. Those people are special to me. Jesus was talking about people like you and me. Do you believe or, or are you like doubting Thomas? Thank you so much, Poppy. Do you believe or are you like doubting Thomas? I believe. Now, the, the, write, the faith writer, John Westeroff, in his book, Will Our Children Have Faith, talks about seeking, searching and questioning as being vital to the process of coming to a mature or owned faith. And I'm hoping that in today's worship, we can use the, the inspiration of Thomas's story to explore the process of coming to believe and how sometimes we can test the truth. I'm hoping that Andy is going to be able to share a hymn with us this morning, and it's from the Salvation Army Citadel at Portsmouth. It's called, Lord, there are times when I have to ask why.
Thank you, Andy. I do hope that the interwebs didn't make that too wobbly for you. Um, I'm reminded that if you do go to the church website, the full version of the text service is available with the full links to the various YouTube videos for the music choices that I have chosen for this morning. So the fact of Jesus being alive again mattered so much to Thomas that he needed to know for himself. And if our Easter faith really matters, then I think possibly doubt is essential. That questioning is essential. And then I'm thought, thought about trying to relate that to today. There, there is so much fake news around. There are so many ways of making it look like somebody said something, making it look like somebody is saying something, if you look at some of these deep fakes. So how do we test what is true? The voice on the other end of the phone says, I am calling from your bank. I need your bank account details to transfer the interest from your ISA. Hmm. The headline in the local paper says, MP says hospital should close. With so much fraudulent activity and fake news, how do we test what's true? Truth isn't always obvious, even when there's no intention to deceive us or scaremonger. Truth is never just one person's claim. Hmm, I could ring the bank for myself and check. I might email James Gray and find out what he really said. Truth is tested by questions, by conversations, and by having doubts. For us, just as it was by the first followers of Jesus, when one of them made a really astonishing claim and another one, Thomas, wasn't quite so sure. As I said in my introduction, I'm hoping that we can come to realise that doubts are necessary as Christians. In preparing for the service, I doubted what I believed and I had to sit down and really think about it. And I found this quite a comfort. This is called the door to discovery. How strangely comforting, Lord that so many of your servants have doubted you. So if I cannot always see the sense of your word, if I do not always feel confident about my faith, if I wonder where your love is in the face of pain and death, I'm not the first. A great company of saints and martyrs has felt this way before me. Now in your presence, they see face to face and know as they are known. Teach me, like them, not to fear doubt, as to see it as a sign of the mystery of life and a door to discovery. Let us pray. I'll start with our prayers of confession this morning. We confess that we are so often judgmental of others. In particular, we berate those who do not share our beliefs. What need have they of proof? Why can't they just believe? Yet we live in a world where little is taken at face value. Fake news surrounds us and the camera definitely does lie. Therefore, Lord, give us when we look down upon the unbelievers, 
forgive us when we look down upon the unbelievers, the doubters, the ones who demand proof. For this is the world in which we live, the world to which we must proclaim your truth. There is no proof we can offer in these times except to show our belief in the ways which we reach out by accepting and loving unconditionally, by showing patience and forbearance to those who differ from us. Or is it us who differ from them? Therefore, forgive us when we fail to reflect your truths in our daily lives and let us become testaments to your risen power. May Christ be evident in us and in all we do. Amen. Lord, we thank you for your patience with us, your acceptance of our doubting and questioning and our assurance of forgiveness. How many times do we grieve your heart with our lack of belief and exasperate you with our lack of faith? But like any good parent, you gather us to you and answer our misgivings. With you, Lord, there is infinite forgiveness. Amen. As we go into our intercessions this morning, I'd like to use a response. So when I say God in whom we believe, I'd like everyone to respond, bless them. Eternal, everlasting God, you are eternally patient with us. No matter what we do, you persevere with us. Help each of us to show patience and perseverance with others. And with this prayer in our hearts and on our lips, we pray for those we know and love and hear of this day. God in whom we believe, bless them. For those struggling to accept the Easter message of resurrection, for those who long to have faith but miss the final step, who long to see Jesus but doubt what they see, seeing only as if in a mirror dimly, who long to hear your word but grasp only a muffle and a murmur, who yearn to feel your presence but shy away from contact, for those who need convincing of the truth in an age of fake news and skewed views. God in whom we believe, bless them. For those whose health and well-being teeter on the edge of uncertainty or insanity, pain, disfigurement and anguish. For those living with COVID in all its forms, immediate and long term. For those whose treatment is delayed and who are ground down by the mental and physical pain that can't yet be treated. For those who live with darkness and dread bombarding their waking moments. God in whom we believe. Bless them. For those without the shelter of a home, with no roots to a place, who are constantly forced to move on, change direction through war or violence, political unrest, prejudice, religious hatred, and so much more. For those who seek refuge in new places and new lands with new languages and new norms. God in whom we believe, bless them. For the countries who make news headlines and then slip from view with little changed. 
for the people of Myanmar, Mozambique and Ethiopia, whose struggle goes on to keep life together against so much hatred, prejudice, greed and violence. We cannot imagine or comprehend the lives these people are forced to live, the challenges they face, the fragility and fear and destitution of their lives. God, in whom we believe, bless them. For those areas in our country where unrest and unhappiness with government plans or police tactics or religious divides bring people out onto the streets in protest, for those who want to peacefully make their stand, but are overtaken by the violent few who up the ante and go armed for violence. For those who perpetrate the unrest, that they may be helped to see that violence is not the answer and will often only fuel more problems for those who make plans and laws and those who need to police society. May they and we seek unity, purpose and love. God in whom we believe, bless them. The disciples gathered together behind closed doors, not only for fear of the Jewish authorities, but they gathered to grieve the loss of their friend, their leader, their visionary, their Lord. We pray for those who mourn the loss of family or friends, and especially at this time, for Her Majesty the Queen, following the death of His Royal Highness Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. Bring them light and hope for the life ahead. God in whom we believe, bless them. For us, let's just pray for ourselves for a moment, that we might banish shadows that hold us back and keep us fixed to what we are familiar with. Even the new familiar, when we can be afraid to step out, to step on, to step forward, to step up. We pray that we might know the wisdom of the psalmist, the grace of God, the blessing of the spirit, the love and companionship of each other, and the atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ. These are our prayers this day. Amen. I'm hoping if they're going to let us have this little bit of time to share with you my challenge for the coming week. Now, I usually give you something to do. And I had to think about what I believe. Now, I don't know how you do it. Um, I've been doodling and doing artwork through my... Oh, okay. I've been doodling and doing some artwork through the lockdown and I did a journal page. I had to think about what do I believe and I've got a picture of it now. I don't know who can see and who can't see. Wow. You might not, you might not feel as arty as me. Uh, you might just want to do a list of bullet points but I found it really helpful to think about what do I actually believe? I think Andy has got a version of the creed, which I'm sharing from Hillsong. In 
So that was my picture that I did. I was quite relieved once I had started to find that the things that I believed in were the things that I'd like to think that the rest of the church believed in, in some senses. We're quite lucky that we're quite a broad church and we do think of our faith in a very broad way that other people don't have to exactly line up with what we think. I was also quite touched when Andy and Poppy picked up on what I'd been doing and Andy said, I really like what you said about Jesus, about Jesus being a baby and being a radical and being risen. Um, I also quite liked that some of our core values about looking after the planet and about second chances and forgiveness were brought out in what I was thinking about when I drew my picture. So this is what I kind of want to leave you with as your homework for the week, is to maybe have a muse. I don't know whether some of you have midnight musings when you get up in the night, or whether you scribble and doodle when you're listening to the radio, or maybe you're like me and you sit down with a piece of paper and some coloured pens. Have a go with a pen and paper and have a look at what do you believe in? What do you stand for? What do you trust? I was quite moved to find out the sort of things that were important to me. My little picture also contains a few things that are very personal that people would associate with me. I included a thread stitching everything together and a cup of tea. <laughs> I'm very well known in our house for always wanting a cup of tea. I'd like to leave you with a blessing this morning. Father, your son Jesus did not reject Thomas. Help us to value questions and questioners and not to reject either when they are awkward. To discern what kind of evidence is appropriate and trustworthy in different situations. And to have the courage ourselves to be questioners and seekers of truth. Amen. <laughs>